Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. Today we have, coming to us uh, from Texas, um, Jessica Nunn with the Skytail Group. Jessica, say good morning. Good morning. I know you're based in Texas, but you work with practices nationwide, correct? We do. Yes, we do. Yeah, so excited to have you on here. Um, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your background and what you do and how you help uh, dentists and practices? Yeah, sure. So I like to tell people I'm a recovering CPA, did the accounting and tax thing for uh, mm-hmm. too long, <laughs> but learned in that time that what I really love is helping business owners, got connected in the dental industry and really found my niche there. Um, I love helping dentists understand where their money is going. We work with them to build a plan, to narrow their focus, really to overall reduce stress. Finances in your business can be really stressful, especially I feel like with dentists, because, you know, in school, you guys learning about teeth and anatomy and not financials and profit and loss and balance sheet. So we find that sometimes our dental clients, before they start working with us, they're just burying their head in the sand, like, uh, just keep, if I keep cranking it out, surely, eventually I'll be profitable. I don't know when that is, but eventually it'll happen. Yeah, you get busy, you know, you're in the chair, you're working, um, you have long days, you're seeing patients, you have tough cases, um, you have so much going on, and it seems like finances are like actually the last thing you want to think about, um, but they're the thing that keeps a lot of dentists up at night. Do you agree with that? I totally agree. And our goal and what really like is kind of my why behind it is when I start working with the dentist and they say, um, oh my gosh, I understand. Now I finally understand what's working in my business and I see where the money's going and you've just changed my practice. You know, they really get passionate about it because it affects their life. So I, I tell our team and people we work with, like we are changing lives over here because we're really helping these dentists get control over their finances, which helps them sleep better, improves relationships, all these things. So that's our goal is to, to change their practice and ultimately affect their life. So I have to imagine that a lot of practices contact you when they're totally stressed out, right? So they've kind of neglected their finances. They've kind of been putting it off. They have, you know, they have a reconciliation sheet from the year before that they just they haven't even touched. Um, and then they contact you. Is that pretty accurate? It is that, or sometimes they, they're they a little bit aware. They're like, I think I know what's happening. I review my profit and loss, but I want to make a change. Like maybe I want to work less and bring in an associate or I'm moving or I'm doing these things and I don't know how that's going to work. So it's kind of two things. I'm stressed and I just want to plan or I'm, I'm not that stressed. I'm okay, but I want to make a change and I have no clue how that works. So what is this? process looks like. I mean, that makes total sense, by the way. And I, I hear the same thing, not being in your uh, niche, in your industry, in, in your area of expertise. So when you start working with a practice, kind of how does that, what does that relationship look like? And what should it look like? Um, you know, what should um, you be working on with a practice and what do they need to bring to you and, and just kind of uncover all that for us? Well, the first thing we like to do is make sure they've got accurate financial statements. So um, we we help them work with a bookkeeper. If they don't if they don't have one, we recommend good ones. We you know oftentimes I'm sure you hear this with a lot of people. They'll say, oh no, it's okay. I have my fraternity brother or my sister's husband's best friend working on my books, right? But we want yeah. someone who is truly a bookkeeper recording your transactions. We want to see accurate data. So when we look at your data, our first uh, we start out really by trying to understand where you're going. You know, are you trying to build out a huge practice with three providers? Or are you good just being you and maybe you want to work less, but be more productive? And then we build a plan to get there. So really, we we create awareness by building the plan and figuring out where you are. And we, we kind of give you the lesson of where you are now. We'll say, okay, here's what we're seeing in your practice. Your revenue is this, your collections are this, but why? How did it get there? And so what we like to dive into are the nuts and bolts of it. So your collections last year were a million dollars, but they didn't, that million dollars didn't just show up. Who did it? Who produced it? How many hours did they work to get it produced? And then overall, what was their revenue per hour? So your hygiene department, are they producing at 
$75 an hour? Are they producing at $200 an hour? Where do we want them to be producing? What's healthy? How do we build a plan to have them get there? Your, you, you as the dentist, are you producing at 400 an hour? Are you producing at 800 an hour? Are you producing at 1200 an hour? Are you producing at 200 an hour? You know, when we build out, we call those KPIs, key performance indicators. So those are our building blocks to our revenue. Let's make a plan. Where is it now? Where do we want it to be? And where should it be so that our practice is healthy financially? So I know a lot of dentists that um, can tell you what they did in collections. Um, I can tell you a lot of dentists that know how much they net. I don't know any dentist, honestly, who ever told me how much they're making per hour, right? Or what, what are they generating per hour? When you know that number, what can you do with it? What's the benefit oh. of knowing how much you're bringing in per hour, how much your hygienist is bringing in per hour? So many things. So oftentimes when we work with dentists, we'll say, you know, we'll say exactly like you said, you did a million dollars last year and that was $83,000 a month. Cool. How'd you get there? And they'll say, I it just kind of happened. I don't know. And we'll say, well, now you want to be at 1.5. How are we going to get there? So we don't know how we're going to get to our goal and how we're going to build the practice if we don't know why we're achieving those numbers. So we'll say, okay, you're working four days. That's this many hours. And right now you're doing 400 an hour. So can you have a practice that brings in 2 million a year if you're bringing in 400 an hour? And if your hygienists are bringing in 100 an hour, is, does that math even work? Do you want to work seven days a week to get to your goal? If the sure. answer you know, is no, then we have to back in. What does it take? What does it take to get to your revenue goal? And that way, if we miss it, we understand why. We missed the revenue goal this month. Was it the doctor production? Was it the hygiene production? Where did we miss? And then that helps us dive even more. Okay, it's the hygiene production. All right, what happened? Well, we had so much open time in our hygiene schedule. Okay, is that a new patient problem? Like we can really dive into the why around the revenue figures. So when I meet with a client, I don't say, okay, it's April. Your revenue goal for April, your collections goal is 100,000. Good luck, have fun. Right. You know, we truly say, how are you going to get there? How many patients are walking through your door? What does the schedule look like? What are the procedures that you're doing? And, and how do we build a plan to get to that revenue goal? Because where it starts, right, if you're not profitable or you're not sure where your profitability is, honestly, it's about revenue, right? You're not going to cut costs to get your profitability. That's I, I doubt that it's any dentist's desire to say, you know what, I'm going to fire half my team because sure. I'm not making the kind of money I want to make, right? We right. have to grow our way out of it. Sure, we're going to move the, the thermostat five degrees in the summer and winter, right, to save a few bucks on energy. And that'll get us there. That is going <laughs> yeah. to get us the profitability we've always desired. Now, one thing that's in the back of my mind that I'm thinking about, I'm mean, going I think about this often, um, the more conversations I have, the more I think about this, is that there's a lot of numbers that are thrown around um, from practice to practice to practice. And a lot of these numbers, I believe, are made up. Um, I hear practices talk about how much revenue they're doing, um, and then also how many new patients they're taking out per month. And I'm like, wait a second, how does this fit? Like, this doesn't, like, are you working seven days a week? Is your practice open 24 hours a day? I think when you know what your actual numbers are, then you can actually make reasonable goals based on yourself, not based on rumors that you hear on the internet about how much you should be generating or how much a hygienist should be generating or or what have you. Um, knowing, you know, obviously knowing what, your numbers are allows you to manage where you're going. So I appreciate that very much. So um, when you start working with a practice and you've identified um, what these um, what these numbers look like and they know what these numbers look like, what usually happens from the practice after that? Like what changes in the practice once they identify these? Well, I'll say what we do then is narrow their focus. So we have practices that have challenges all in different areas, right? And you're right. It, it doesn't do a lot of good for us to compare ourselves to the practice next door or the practice across the country, right? I say compare yourself to your best practice. Compare yourself to the practice you want to be, right? L compare yourself to that. Don't compare. We don't know what other people's issues, problems, or real numbers are, right? So let's start by doing that. But I'll say once we've identified the true challenges, in our example, it was the hygiene department or whatever it was, right? Then we can focus on that. So as a business owner, you got a lot of things to worry about. You're juggling the team, you're juggling clinical, you're juggling everything. So if I can say, listen, your your costs are fine, or your production is great, or your hygiene production is great, or whatever it is, 
if I can say instead, the, the biggest items that are going to move the needle for your profitability and for your cash flow is this and this. Let's focus on those. Let's work on those. Then you know as a business owner, oh good, I don't have to worry about 15 things just because as if I worry about two things and really put my attention to these two things, I can truly make a difference, move the needle, increase cash flow, whatever it might be. So Jessica, let's, let me ask you this question. I like to ask this often uh, of our guests. Um, there's, a, there's quite a few agencies and quite a few people who work around or in the same business category as you do, um, working with dentists in regards to finances um, and accounting and, and books and numbers and all of this, um, all of these things that are required. Um, how do you vet? What's a, how would you recommend a, a practice go about vetting the right person in the right firm to work with? Yeah, you know, I would say first, understand what you're looking for. You know, we have um, some, some, honestly, some people call us and they'll say, I'm just calling because I need a good CPA. And we'll say, well, we don't do books and accounting um, or tax returns. You know, we're not a CPA firm. Let's understand really what you're looking for. And it turns out they're not looking for a CPA. They're looking for someone to project forward. They're looking for someone to build a plan or build a budget. So then we say, okay, well, your CPA is actually fine, right? You're just expecting them to do things that they don't do or whatever it might be. So I would say, make sure you understand what you, your true need is. We work with a lot of, uh, we call them like clinical or operational coaches. Or if we do identify, for example, hey, there's a hygiene problem here. We can't come in and say, you're not diagnosing this. You're not doing like, that's not really our role. But we can say, let's find someone who can fix that problem. So sure. we'll help them identify someone specifically for that problem. So first, understand your problem and then find the solution for specifically that problem. Yeah, makes sense. I'm going to ask you one more kind of tricky question. It's, it's kind of fun. If you have, um, what is a, what is one piece of advice that you give dentists that is not accepted? In other words, you know, they know they need to do it. They they do it for a period of time and they stop, but that really is the game changer. And we see this all the time in consulting and coaching, right? You're telling them, you know, what to do. And if they do it, it works and they, it'll even work for a period of time. And then they stop doing it and wonder why it's not working anymore. What is one common thing that you see? Hmm. Okay. Well, we give a lot of advice in our yeah. meetings. So we make a lot of recommendations. Yeah. I, you know, I would say the hardest one to implement, gosh, there's a few. So I don't know that there's one clear winner, but one recent one comes to mind. Um, we have clients sometimes who are flooded with patients and they are seeing so many patients and they're so excited because their production is, you know, whatever it is. And we'll say, but listen, what are your collections off of that? Do you know you're adjusting 35% of your production? It's time to drop some of these insurance plans. Um, that's a frequent conversation that we have. You, your production per hour is $350 an hour net production because your fee schedule with these insurance guys are so low. How can we make our hourly rate more profitable or higher maybe by um, being more picky on what insurance we're on? That's one, but, but, you know, dentists oftentimes feel compelled. I want to take care of everybody, right? Yeah. I don't want to drop these plans. I'm scared about what that will do to my revenue. I'm too nervous. So I, I don't want to make that change. Right. That might be one. Yeah. I think that's a, is a, and that's great advice. Um, you, you nailed that question. So I think it's a lot of value for our audience. I appreciate it. But I think it is, it's, it's almost like people that are stuck in toxic, um, romantic relationships, right? They don't leave because they're, they have some underlying fear that where they may go is worse than where they're at now. And I think that's what we see oftentimes with PPOs when they see people complain about them nonstop, but they're there. You're like, what are you doing? I like, know we're doing this to ourselves, but I think a lot of that comes from the fear because we don't know our finances necessarily, right. right? So we don't know how low can I go in collections? Like if I drop them and my collections drop in half, is can I sustain that and for how long? Right. right. So we, we can build that out. We love to be able to run scenarios and say, no, nope, if you're right, you're going to run out of money or actually this is fine. Let's show you how it'll work. Yep. Great advice, Jessica. I appreciate you coming on today. I want to tell our audience your website real quickly. Again, it's a uh, skytailgroup.com. Um, Jessica, none of you're a partner there. Um, world of information, great amount of knowledge. I recommend that our audience reach out to you. Thanks so much for coming on today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. 
We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.